I really want to make sure that we're able to slow our life down and that I can be able to commit a lot of hours to spending time with my daughter, you know, where I'm at now in real estate, it's, you know, it's been phenomenal. The amount of time that I get to spend with my daughter going to swim lessons, you know, in the middle of the day during the work week, I'm one of the only dads that gets to go, you know, those are really cool experiences that, that I'm blessed to be able to have. This show is dedicated to helping you strengthen your family tree and live financially free. Welcome to the Marriage, Kids, and Money podcast, everybody. This is Andy Hill, and today we're talking about investing in multifamily real estate. Yes, my quest for rental property knowledge continues, my friends. While Nicole and I continue to save up our money to buy our first rental property, I figured I would speak with somebody who's had some massive success in real estate to keep me motivated. Our guest today is Joel Florick at 25 years old. He now owns 31 units in both Michigan and Indiana. These properties provide him so much cash flow that he's recently been able to leave his 9 to 5 and pursue his passion for sailing and family. Joel's story of real estate success has been featured in Bigger Pockets and on multiple five star rated podcasts. As a husband, father, and Michigan native, I am honored to have him on the show today. Welcome to the show, Joel. Hey, thank you very much. Happy to be here. Awesome, man. So how did you decide real estate was something you were interested in? Yeah. So, I mean, it really goes back to when I was just a a little kid. Uh, My parents had always used uh, real estate as a way to uh, build some financial success and wins for themselves. So uh, they typically took the approach of buying an old house, renovating it, uh, going on, buying another house. They'd typically rent out the old one. Um, so from as early as I can remember, I was helping my dad install hardwood floors. Uh, he used to work nights. I'd come home from school and, uh, he'd have a bag of parts from Menards sitting on, uh, the kitchen table with a note telling me, you know, how to go install, uh, you, you know, these metal support clips, uh, into the new deck that we were building. Um, so I, you know, go out there for a couple hours and, and work on getting those projects done. So, um, I've, I've been around home renovations my whole life. Um, and I've been right by my parents' side in kind of their adventures through real estate. Now they never treated it, uh, as a business. It was always just kind of this little side hustle for them. Uh, they had some great wins and I got to see what those looked like. Uh, and they, you know, frankly, they've made a lot of mistakes along the way. Um, and, and I've been able to learn from those and that's been so invaluable. Um, so, uh, I mean, yeah, it really, you know, stems from, from going up, uh, you know, with my parents and, and getting to help them, um, through kind of their adventures. So it's incredible. So it's a, a family legacy of, uh, real estate investing as well as just passing down the knowledge and, and also the failures, which is great for both sides, because if you don't fail, you don't learn. Right. So what, what was the first property you ended up buying? Yeah, so I bought a four-unit uh, multifamily property uh, when I got out of college. So I started a corporate job. Uh, I was a program manager uh, for a uh, engineering company. I was put in charge of the fire suppression division, primarily working with U.S. Navy, U.S. Coast Guard. Um, and again, going back to those roots with my parents, I knew that uh, I wanted real estate to become uh, a, a core part of how, uh, I started to become financially free because I, I watched those stresses, uh, of finances that my parents had through my whole life. And I didn't want to replicate that. So, um, buying that first multifamily property, I lived in one unit. Uh, I fixed up the others, rented them out. Uh, and within just a handful of months of starting this job, uh, I was able to live rent free. Um, and being, you know, very frugal right out of school, uh, my monthly expenses were, you know, maybe twelve hundred dollars. Um, you know, I had an old car uh, that I owned outright from school and and traded up to an old truck, uh, you know, that I could buy in cash. So um, I had this great job, you know, really didn't cost me much at all to live. 
Um, and that put me in just a really great position um, really quickly right out of college. That's great. That's great. So you talked a little bit about the, the family stresses that um, you had maybe seen as you were growing up. Obviously, the rental properties maybe helped that. What were some of the things that uh, your family struggled with that you don't want for your family now? Yeah. So, uh, you know, both my brother and I, we played a lot of sports growing up. Um, it, you know, there's there's some stories where, uh, it, you know, of course, my brother um, he, he really worked hard playing travel hockey. My parents never wanted to prevent us from getting those opportunities that we really wanted to have. And, and frankly, it's a very expensive sport. So, um, you know, hockey sticks are expensive. Hockey skates are expensive. Um, you know, myself, uh, you know, I remember wanting to try new sports and I want to try mountain biking. Like, well, mountain bikes are, are expensive. Um, so, you know, it, it was a lot of little things through my life. Um, you know, just seeing them work nine to five jobs, uh, work side jobs, and then work on trying to, uh, you know, remodel the houses and, and provide us with that living. And they were constantly, constantly working. I mean, don't get me wrong. Yeah. The phenomenal parents love them to death, my best friends, but, um, but seeing how hard they had to work all the time, um, I didn't want that for myself and my family. Yeah. Um, I really want to make sure that we're able to slow our life down and that I can be able to commit a lot of hours to spending time with my daughter. Um, and, you know, where I'm at now in real estate, it's, you know, it's been phenomenal the amount of time that I get to spend with my daughter, um, going to swim lessons, uh, you know, in the middle of the day during the work week, I'm one of the only dads that gets to go. Um, you know, those are really cool experiences that, that I'm blessed to be able to have. That's very cool, man. Well, I mean, you talked about a lot of important things there. Your parents, were and I'm sure they still are wanting to give you guys the best life possible and then in in the midst of that you know we all as parents work really hard so that we can give the kids the best life possible and sometimes that sometimes that really affects what kind of work we have to do and how hard we have to do uh, how, how how much work we have to do so that's real I really appreciate you sharing that with me uh, it's a lot of a motivation um, that people have when they do incredible things like you've done so let's talk a little bit about um what you did after the first property. So it sounds like a little house hack in the beginning. Yep. Uh, you know, you, you live in it and you got your expenses covered. And then you go and decide to purchase a 16 unit after that. Whoa. Whoa. I mean, that's a, that's a bump up. Uh, so why did you decide to do that? Yeah. So uh, I, I, you know, I had the bug. It was working. <laughs> Um, you know, I put together the plan for that four unit. It was working like a charm. You know, I was able to get rents higher than I thought I was going to be able to get. Um, so I, 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 you know, I saw that success and I knew I wanted to grow. I thought it'd be another three unit, four unit property. Um, if I was lucky and I was, uh, actually having conversation with my carpet installer, uh, who is, uh, helping me renovate one of the units. And uh, I had mentioned to him, hey, if, if you know of any other properties that are coming for sale, let me know. And he says, actually, um, I've got this guy who I do work for, and I think he's trying to sell his his apartment complex. I think it's like 16 units. <laughs> and, and, you know, I didn't want to say no. Um, so I just said, well, it's a little bigger than, than I was thinking, but I would love to have a conversation. And uh, needless to say... Um, that led to a lot of, uh, about four months of work, uh, of working back and forth, um, with the seller. Uh, it, it was an off market deal, no realtors involved, um, tried a lot of different ways, trying to bring in investors. I tried to, um, you know, look at a lot of different options. Um, ultimately we came to, uh, kind of a, a certain financing agreement that allowed me to be able to close the sale with, uh, um, you know, not too much money down, um, which allowed me to be able to buy the property. It was, you know, definitely uh, a step that, 
you know, typically people would have to wait till they had saved up quite a bit more capital to do. But um, very fortunate. I built a great relationship with the seller and, and it's worked out fantastic for me. That's great. Well, l- let's get specific. So what yeah. part of the country uh, is the 16 unit in? And then can you share uh, information on the sale price, things like that? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, the properties are up in uh, Iron Mountain, Michigan. Um, Where my so wife it's... was born, by the way, FYI, <laughs> who was also named Nicole, and your wife's named Nicole. I'm sorry, I interrupted. You keep going. <laughs> I didn't know that. So um, that's that's pretty cool that she's from Iron Mountain. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it's it's a pretty small town, uh, about fifteen thousand people. Um, a lot of really strong manufacturing uh, and engineering jobs there. A diverse economy, a lot of different employers too. So it's not just one you know big company. Um, so I purchased it for 685. Um, with that, I financed 80% on a commercial loan through the bank. That's a first position loan. Uh, the sellers finance 16% on a second position mortgage. Um, and then I was responsible for the remaining amount to bring to the table. Now there's some prorations with how we structure closing. So, uh, we close on the first, the rent payments for that month, uh, we actually had those go to the seller. Since I wouldn't have any bills on the property uh, until the next month, I knew that I'd have rents coming in that following month to pay those bills next month. So um, that allowed me to basically put about $10,000 towards closing through that proration, um, as well as tax and a couple other different things uh, that helped reduce how much I actually needed to bring to the table. Yeah, because at uh, uh, 25 years old, you probably don't have... Um, you know, six hundred and eighty-five thousand dollars laying around, right? So you had, yeah. to, you had to figure out a creative way to get this this paid for, right? E- exactly. Okay. Cool. Exactly. So, um, you mentioned something in there, and again, I, I don't know a lot about rental real estate. Uh, this, I would say, this is probably a beginner show for a lot of people who are listening to real estate uh, or listening um, to interviews about real estate. What does it mean to have the seller finance? I don't understand what that means. Yeah, yeah. So uh, you go get a loan with the bank. Mm -hmm. Um, It's a mortgage document. It's a legal document that gets put together. It gets recorded with the title paperwork. It's the same thing, whether it's the seller or whether it's Susie down the street uh, that you went and got a loan from. Mm -hmm. So uh, the seller basically holds a mortgage against the property uh, as well as the bank. So I have two separate mortgages. Now, I I mentioned first position and second position. What that means is in a default situation, if I can't make my payments on the property, if if the bank has to come back and take that asset away from me, the bank who's in first position, they get their money first. The sellers who are in second position, they get their money second. Um, One of the things that I really like to kind of point out when a seller is willing to hold a second position mortgage, because it's riskier, right? Again, that second position, um, it means that they believe in their asset. Um, These guys built the property back in 1993. Mm. They have owned it and managed it for a very long time. They had very detailed financial records on the property. Um, I, you know, like I said, I spent four months with them working on putting this deal together. So I really... I learned a lot about this deal because it's a smaller town. Um, not that many people are running out trying to buy a 16 unit apartment complex. Um, and, and again, it was a off market deal, not advertised through the you know typical online channels. So um, I got to spend a lot more time than you typically would if something like that comes available for sale in a big city. Things move a lot faster. So we were able to slow the process down and I was able to do a lot of learning uh, before we actually went and closed the deal. That's, that sounds good. It sounds like you were doing some, you know, said four months of due diligence beforehand to kind of get everything going. What what kind of uh, what kind of rates are you uh, having with those two different mortgages? Yeah. So uh, with the bank financing, uh, twenty years at uh, four point eight five percent, five year balloon on that term. So five years, uh, you know, from when we close that, I have to refinance that. Um, the seller piece, um, we did a 2% interest rate, 10 year amortization. Um, so that way I'm paying down debt 
fast. Mm-hmm. I want to pay down that principal so I can build up that equity. Um, and we only have a three year balloon on that. So actually this spring that balloon payment comes due. But if you actually, uh, look at, you know, how that's structured with the principal pay down on those two loans, I actually get to 20% equity, uh, Mm -hmm. roughly, um, this spring when that three year balloon is due. So I knew from the very beginning, working with the bank that when that three year seller finance note was due, um, I could refinance the whole property and I would have the 20% equity that the bank would be comfortable with. And again, this is a multifamily real estate asset. There's a lot of units in the property. Um, so there's a lot of people who are helping to pay Um, those bills. Um, I knew that the rents were low on the property. So I knew that where the market was at when I bought it, I could up rents quite a bit. And frankly, the property's done a lot better than I ever imagined it could. I mean, it's it's exceeded even the best expectations of where I thought the financial plan was um, when I originally put it together. That's cool. Yeah. And I heard that's like a, a benefit of multifamily is that if you have a single, well, a single family home, and if you have a vacancy, then hey, you're you're out of money. But if you have one person leave your 16 unit, you still have 15 others that are that are paying you the money, right? Exactly. And there's a whole lot of other benefits that come with multifamily. And and you know that was something again. Watching my parents and learning them, I learned you know what worked and what didn't. You know when they had small multifamily. I would argue that that's when my parents were in the best financial position. Um, When they owned single family, I'd always see, oh, a tenant's moving out and my parents are stressed out because they're worried that they're going to get hit with with having a double mortgage between their house and their rental property. So, um, you know, from that experience and doing additional research, you know, really understanding that, hey, multifamily, you got a lot of people that are helping to pay the bills. Um, and I can, I can afford to have, you know, tenants moving out and vacancies for a little while. Um, I haven't had any, uh, I typically have a tenant move out, uh, on Sunday and the, the new tenants moving in on Monday. Um, but if things take a turn, I have a lot of wiggle room. Um, cause again, I'm focused on cash flowing multifamily real estate. Uh, and if you go to some, you know, quote unquote, hot markets. Um, those properties, a lot of times don't cash flow when you put together the financing package, because the valuations have gotten pretty crazy. Um, you're playing against institutional money. And you know, this, it becomes this really crazy game. But when you're in smaller markets, um, the great thing is that valuations make a lot more sense for the small people like me, you know, myself, um, where we can get that cash flow off the property and, you know, the business, the property is a business, right? It can support itself. Mm-hmm. Um, and with that cash flow, it can support, you know, a, a downturn. It can support vacancies. Um, so it's, you know, a really powerful thing that, made me feel a lot more comfortable going into, uh, you know, small multifamily real estate. Excellent. Very cool. Well, I, I am, uh, and I've shared this on the show quite a bit. I'm a, I'm pretty averse to debt. So when I, when I hear about gigantic loans like this, it just kind of makes me get all twisted inside, but that's just, <laughs> that's just me, man. And I, I understand that there are massively successful people out there, especially in real estate that, uh, use, use debt as a tool to, to, build their wealth and get that cash flow and get the freedom. So can you tell me why taking out a big loan like this does not bother you? Yeah. So exactly like you said, debt is a tool. And if a tool is used improperly, it can be a weapon, right? So um, it can do a lot of harm uh, and it can also do a lot of good. Now, I hate debt as well. Um, you know, I'm really uncomfortable with that. I owned, uh, you know, the, the, when I upgraded from my little tiny car in college, uh, to a truck after I was, you know, investing in real estate and had a great corporate job, I bought an old rusty beat up truck that I paid cash for. Um, you know, other than student loans, um, I, I didn't take on personal debt. Um, I own, you know, very few clothes. I don't go, you know, I have one pair of jeans, 
even now. Um, like that's that's it. I, I I really don't spend a lot on myself personally. Um, so you know, I, I want you to understand. I'm not somebody who just, you know, feels totally comfortable with debt and, you know, racking up the credit cards on, you know, frivolous things. But um, going back to a book that, that you know, I uh, was really impactful for me, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, the basic concept of assets bring money in, liabilities take money out of your pocket, right? So, um I'm comfortable taking on debt if I'm buying an asset, something that's going to bring in more money than it costs. Like I said, I'm buying a business when I buy a multifamily property. So I know that if I do my job, that uh, if I'm buying a quality asset with quality tenants in a quality neighborhood in a market that I feel comfortable with long term, um, I'm okay taking a little bit more risk today. Now, to follow this up, I want to pay that debt down. <laughs> you know, that's that's the other piece of this. There's a lot of gurus in the real estate world today that tell you, oh, go buy this real estate asset, value add, um, you know, increase the rents, the property value is going to go up, go back to the bank, refinance it, take all the equity out that you can, go buy another one. Nah, I'm not very comfortable with that. You know, my goal is to build a lifestyle business that can allow my family to travel, um, you know, to spend time going to the beach, hiking, sailing, you know, what have you. Um, I, I don't want to be stressed about this, you know, mountain of, of debt and, and kind of setting up these dominoes where the only way I can keep them falling over is going and, and buying more things. So when I buy an asset, the goal is that it supports itself mm -hmm. and that I pay down debt, you know, on the schedule, according to the schedule, and I'm not taking out more debt against it. Um, so with that said, where I'm at now, uh, my portfolio pays down more than $40,000 a year in debt off of those loans. Wow. Right. So there's the cash flow piece. I cash flow more than what I used to make in my corporate job. And oh, by the way, there's an extra $40,000 that gets paid down in principal off my loans. That's a so you're, powerful you're, net worth you're living builder. On, you're living on enough that, you, so let, me, let me repeat this then. So you yep. are, you're paying down 40K on the principal of your debt and you are making more, you're making enough money that covers higher than you were making at your your full time job. Is that right? Off the off the cash flow. Off the cash yeah. Flow. So so the cash flow is that's after paying um, my mortgages, my insurance, my taxes, my maintenance. You know everything that it, it, it takes to to actually be able to you know hold these assets. The cash flow is you know everything that's left over. So the cash flow that I have off these because again I'm buying quality cash flowing assets. I'm increasing rents. I'm, I'm, you know, focusing on renovations so that way I can get better quality tenants into the property who are willing to pay more. Um, so that cash flow is what I live off of. I cash flow more than I used to make in my corporate job. Hmm. And there's this bonus of the debt pay down off of all of these mortgages that I have. And again, I'm not pulling that equity back out of those properties. I'm focused on paying those down. Um, so that way I can get in a much more comfortable position where I don't have as big of a loan, so I can take a bigger hit in a downturn. Um, so, uh, it, it, you know, it really is a, a, you know, a powerful tool. Um, I, I don't have to worry about necessarily investing into an IRA or a 401k because I have these big assets that are paying down a ton of debt every single month and just increasing my net worth. And, and I can sell them anytime I want. I, I, I you know, they're quality assets. Um, it might take me three, six, 12, you know, maybe 24 months to exit out of the portfolio. This isn't a, a, a quick flip the switch. I want to be done tomorrow thing. But um, as long as I'm, you know, willing to hang on, um, you know, through that process, I, you know, I can exit out of this and, and 
you, you know, be able to move forward if I want, but you know, I, I don't want to anytime. Right. Sounds like you're having fun. <laughs> you don't need oh, to. Oh, absolutely. We'll be back to the show after a word from our sponsors. Do you have life insurance? If you don't, and you have a family that depends on your income, it is time to put a quality term life insurance policy at the top of your to-do list. And the partner that's going to make the process simple and easy for you is Quotacy. Quotacy is dedicated to helping people get affordable term life insurance so they can protect their families from the unexpected. They compare the best rates for your policy options so you don't have to shop agent to agent. Insurance prices are regulated so you won't find better rates, even if you work directly with the insurer. This saves you time and money. With Quotacy, the life insurance process can be done easily online, and if you want to chat with somebody from their care team, you can easily live chat, text, or email, or talk to somebody over the phone the old-fashioned way. (laughs) To get your free quote with no contact information required, go to marriagekidsandmoney.com slash Quotacy. That's marriagekidsandmoney.com slash Quotacy. That's Q-U-O-T-A-C-Y. Quotacy is term life made simple. We're heading into the new year, my friends. It is time to take control of your money. And Tiller is an excellent way to make the process simple and easy. Tiller is the easiest way to optimize your personal and business finances with the flexibility of a spreadsheet. The beauty of the Tiller system is that it automatically updates your financial information through Google Sheets and Excel. This way, you're not spending time manually updating your numbers. More time for fun, right? (laughs) I'm a big fan of their net worth tracker and their monthly budget template. It makes me feel like I'm truly in control of my cash. For a 30-day free trial of this versatile budgeting system, go to marriagekidsandmoney.com slash tiller. That's marriagekidsandmoney.com slash tiller, T-I-L-L-E-R. With Tiller, you'll always know exactly where your money goes. Thanks for considering our sponsors, everybody. Let's jump back into our show. So speaking of having fun, what... Sounds like you recently made the decision to to leave the full time gig and then do this this uh, real estate thing full time. Is that right? Yes. Uh, well, actually, I left my corporate job um, almost uh, actually two years ago. Oh, okay. Wow. All um, right. Last month, mm-hmm. um, I picked up a part time job. So uh, when my wife and I found out that uh, we had a daughter uh, on the way. Um, we were living, she was in Indiana. I was up in Northern Michigan. Um, so I actually left my corporate job to move down to Indiana. Her family's in the area. We thought it would be a much better situation for raising our daughter. Um, you know, really important to have that family around to help us makes our life easier. And at the same time, it's great for our daughter. Um, where I was in the UP, my, my family's kind of, you know, all over the place nowadays. So, um, I also didn't love my corporate job. Uh, I had the real estate thing going for me. Um, I only had 20 units at that time when I left. Uh, but again, moved down to Indiana. I worked part-time jobs. I, I did some contracting work for a house flipper and did some other things. About this time last year, though, uh, I actually stopped doing side work because I had bought a three unit and then I followed up with an eight unit this time last year. So um, added 11 units to the portfolio last year. And, and this year I haven't added any. Um, I've just really been focused on kind of optimizing the property. So a lot of renovations, again, trying to get better tenants in, focus on rental increases so I can really maximize the amount of wealth that can come uh, out of these properties um, to support my family and, and, and you know, make it make them better places to live for the people who are there. Um, I, I mean, that's important, right? It's a, it, it is a product. Uh, it's a product that really affects people's lives in, in a huge way. Um, so, you know, from my standpoint, trying to make that the best experience I can providing a great product, you, you know, that's really important. Um, I actually, uh, I had a, a tenant come up to me the other day. I was I was doing some uh, exterior renovations at the eight unit. Um, we had taken this property over from a management company that frankly didn't do a very good job with it. There were some shady tenants in it, and I knew that going in. I knew which tenants would likely have to to get uh, 
you know, asked to leave um, when their lease comes up. I, I have every legal right to do that. There's a process to go about it. But um, needless to say, we got better tenants and we upgraded the exterior. And I had this tenant come up to me and just say, hey, thank you. Like the things that you've done here really improved my quality of life. And this guy's, you know, he's, he's 30 years old, has a daughter. It's not, you know, I I mean, wasn't what I expected to hear from him. Um, but he's really appreciative and, and, um, you know, that means a lot. Certainly, you you know, not everybody's going to be happy with you all the time. It's, you know, human nature, right? Anything that you do, but, um, you know, I really do think that we do a, a pretty darn good job of, of trying to uh, improve those properties and, and make them better places to live. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, with 31 units. Is that right? 31 units now? Yep, correct. So with 31 units, I mean, that that's a full-time job within itself. I mean, enough for it to, you know, uh, to, to manage your business. I mean, what, what, what sort of work week do you look at now with your 31, 31 units? Yeah, so I've tried to build systems around my business um, to start you know, making the process a lot easier for me. So, uh, my properties up North 23 units are a six hour drive, uh, from where I am six and a half. Uh, I have to go through Chicago. So sometimes it's a lot longer, uh, if I hit traffic, but, um, I have a resident manager up there, uh, old couple who, you know, lives in one of the units and, and they answer some phone calls. Um, if there's an issue, say leaky toilet, they call the plumber, um, they have a list of contractors that, that they can go to for any issues. I just get a quick text message that just says, Hey, you know, we call the plumbing company. There's an issue in unit number six. I, I don't even, I, you know, I don't have to respond or necessarily give approval for those things. Um, so that makes my life a lot easier that, you know, for, for most of my portfolio, I never, deal with the maintenance phone calls. Um, I focus on capital improvement projects and leasing. That's, that's really what I do. So, um, that sweat equity piece, I, you know, I take and uh, renovate units and renovate the exteriors. Um, and I take on a lot of those projects that I enjoy doing. Uh, you know, frankly, I'm pretty good at it too. Um, so I can get stuff done pretty efficiently um, you know, renovating a unit, I can renovate a 900 unit, uh, square foot unit, um, on a tenant turn, you know, it only takes me four or five days. So, and I can usually plan that work out, which is really nice. So I know that, uh, in the next two weeks I have to go replace three exterior doors before winter hits at my eight unit. Uh, I know that on the 12th, uh, I'm going to be doing some, uh, excavating work at my 16 unit, um, so I have a day planned up there leads into hunting season. So I'm going to go spend a week in the woods with my dad and uncle. And, uh, so I'm going to work on the properties a little bit and then I'm going to go spend a week fun. in the woods. Yeah. Having fun, spending family time, um, doing things that are important. So, um, I, I can really plan out where my work is. I maybe spend five to seven days on average a month actually getting my hands dirty, kind of doing those capital improvement projects. And then it's maybe five hours of uh, work each week on kind of the clerical tasks of paying bills, um, keeping track of my income uh, and expenses for my accounting, um, you know, dealing with leases, uh, lease renewals. Um, it's pretty easy leasing out properties these days with online tools. I have a a strict process that I follow. Um, and that allows me so far, you know, over the last three years with, you know, probably placing 20 plus tenants. Um, I, I haven't had an issue with really a single tenant that I've ever placed because I follow a strict process. I use tenant and back, uh, you know, background and credit screening. Um, So it's, and that's pretty much all through online. So I can handle it from my phone, whether I'm at the beach or hiking or whether I'm at home, you know, sitting at my desk, you know, taking care of some work. Very cool. Well, it sounds like you've, uh, you freed up some good time in your life and you said it's, uh, a good time for that because you've got a, you know, new young daughter in your life. So what does it mean to be a young father that's got a little bit more time, uh, on, on their hands to, uh, to spend time with their family? Yeah. So, uh, I mean, I, I've, it's a totally different world, 
you know, from the single days in college, uh, you know, really the world is me, me, me. Um, and now my daughter's nickname is uh, Mimi. Uh, her name's Amelia. <laughs> so now she yells me, me, me all the time. That's great. Uh, and the world is, you know, it's, it's, it's about her. Um, and it's great to be able to spend time with her. It, it, it really is. Um, when she's doing something cool in the house, uh, you know, my wife can, you know, holler at me and I run out of the office and, uh, you know, can see what new crazy skills she learned, like crawling onto our, uh, kitchen, uh, uh island. <laughs> <laughs> um, but being the, you know, being there to, to go to swim lessons, it's a really nice day. Hey, let's just go to the beach. Like, you know, I, I, I spent three, four hours working in the morning, uh, got some good stuff done. Hey, you know, let's go ahead and, and let's run to the beach. Um, but then I might, you know, work through a weekend, right. Doing some of those capital improvement projects, what have you, I choose when I need to work. And again, it, the focus is a lifestyle business. I mean, I, I want to create a business that's, that creates the best lifestyle for my family. Um, and, and that's, you know, super powerful. So again, you know, thinking forward to college, right? I, I don't stress about a college savings fund because again, you know, right now I have about a million and a half dollars worth of cash flowing multifamily real estate. And again, that pays down a lot of debt every single month. Um, 20 years from now, or I guess, you know, 17 years from now, um, you know, those, most of that debt is going to be slashed away. Um, so really, I, you know, that's a college savings fund in itself. You know, yeah. I, I can pull from that for that special event, but at the same time, the properties are going to be cash flowing a lot better because a lot more debt will have been paid off. So, um, you know, the properties without any debt would cash flow probably about 130,000 to $140,000, uh, a year with no debt. Now, obviously it doesn't do that for me now, but thinking again forward to college, okay, I refinance at that time, not necessarily pulling out more debt, but you know, now I can cash flow more because I reduced, uh, you know, what that monthly mortgage payment is and, and okay, now I can just pay the college, you know, bill with that extra income. So uh, I'm, uh, as I've, as I've talked about, and I'm, I'm aspiring real estate dude. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people are listening to the show are in the same, in the same area. So where is the best place, just like single piece of advice for people mm-hmm. when they're getting started? What's like the best thing that you could tell yourself back when you got started mm-hmm. as to, as to kick things, kick things off on the right way? Yeah. Get out and network with other real estate investors and, and find the person who is living the type of lifestyle that you want to create for yourself. Um, and then just, you know, try and learn as much as you can from them. Um, people like myself who are doing this, most of us love sharing what we've learned, helping other people. Um, there's plenty of real estate to go around. <laughs> you know, it's it's the biggest industry in the world. It's the number one wealth creator. You know, more millionaires are created through real estate than any other uh, avenue. So um, I'm not going to go snatch it all up myself. So I have no problem <laughs> sharing, you know, my experiences. Um, now, with that said, don't go spend tons of money on guru courses. No one's going to give you these secrets that you can't find from just the, the tons of free resources that are available or very low cost, you know, books, books don't cost much money. And there's a lot of great things that you can learn from those. So, um, again, they'll focus on the, the, the people who are living the lifestyle that you want to have. Um, I, you know, for instance, house flippers, um, I'm not a fan of that strategy. Some people love it. Um, and that's how they make their living through real estate. And that's great, you know, more power to them, but they're always chasing a deal. Um, you know, they buy a property, it's a lot of work to flip it. Um, I don't care what anybody tells you, like it's, it's, it's going to be work. It always is. Um, and then they sell it. And the only way they can make more money is if they go buy another deal. Well, getting deals is tough. Um, in my opinion, that's the hardest part about real estate is getting quality deals. So I don't want to be spending all my time chasing deals. Um, so that's where I, I looked at multifamily real estate investors 
And I said, wow, you know, those people are living the lifestyle that I want to live. They go spend a month in Australia and, and, and they have a team of people who, you know, take care of their properties because, you know, they own a larger complex um, or, or, you know, they have a handful of great units um, and they just have somebody who can, you know, help take care of it for them. Um, yeah, I want to live the lifestyle that those people have. So I, 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 you know, did as much as I could to learn from those people. Um, and, and like I said, there's just a ton of free resources out there, bigger pockets, great online resource. Everybody talks about it. Um, but it, it's a great resource for you to network. Um, but local, you know, RIA clubs, um, you know, yeah. So getting out there and networking. I, l- I love that piece of advice of finding somebody that you, you know, you, ad- you admire what they're doing and then, um, and then finding out their strategy to do it. Cause yeah, everybody's got different paths. You know, somebody might love mm-hmm. flipping, somebody might love multifamily, somebody might love single family. That's like right on their block, like, you know, just different ways of, of doing things. So yeah. you, you mentioned books uh, are an important thing for you. You did mention rich dad, poor dad at the top of the show. Love that book. Great book. Is there any other book that was uh, especially influential to you besides that? Yeah, I, I, I in the same series, Cash Flow Quadrant. Um, that that again, the high level concept of where does your money come from? Does it come from a job? Does it come from a, a self employed skill? Does it come from business? Does it come from investments? Um, can you talk about that quadrant because I think it's very powerful of 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 where people can fall in there. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, you know, as I was kind of mentioning there, you know, there's the idea of a job, um, you go to work for somebody else, you make money. Um, that's your, your source of income, right? You're trading time for dollars. There's also the idea of, um, you own a, a kind of self-employed business, right? Um, you have a particular skill set. you build a business, you might have employees, but, you know, think of a dentist or, or a do- doctor or what have you. Um, if you leave for a month, can your patients get the care that they need to have? Do you really own a business? Um, you have the ability to make more money through something like that, right? Um, but, but, you know, still, you're trading time for, for, for dollars. Um, there's the idea of a true business, right, where it does not need you um, in order to operate, to function, um, that's a a very powerful wealth builder. And then of course, you know, you, you have your investments as well. Um, and and, you know, whether it's stocks, whether it's bonds, um, there's ways of investing into real estate without actually being an owner. Um, you can invest in notes, right? So we talked about the seller finance, uh, mortgage, um, that second position mortgage, there's, you know, people who they invest by, uh, investing in other people's assets like myself and, and, and they provide loans, um, might make 8% on it. Right. So, um, there's, there's a lot of different strategies and ways you can go about, you know, kind of creating investments, what have you. Um, I may have butchered a little bit of the quadrant. It's been a long time since I've read that I, book. I totally, but, yeah, sorry, sorry. Um, I totally asked you that like you, like you are, like you were the author itself. I'm sorry about that. But I remember, I just remember the visual, but no, I think you did it perfectly. Yeah. It was like uh, employed, self-employed, business owner, and then yep. investor. I, th- I think, I don't know yep. what the, the letters were. Maybe it's like E S B I or something like that. And then you, then you break it up in those quadrants, but that's, it's a good way to think about things, uh, especially as you look into investing or owning your own business or becoming um, not an employee. So uh, very cool. Hey, I just one more question. So the you have thirty one units. What is mm-hmm. the? Do you know the value? You probably do the value of your portfolio right now, or the or the asset level of the portfolio. Yeah, so it's it, it, it would be around one point five million. One point five. Okay, wow, that's that's pretty yep. cool. Man. And, and again. Um, it, it also depends too, because multifamily assets are based off of a formula cap rate and, and your net operating income. Um, but basically, it's a multiple of how much cash can this thing generate. Yeah. So when you do value add uh, to your property, which value add really just means that your net operating income, you increase that, um, you increase through rents, you decrease expenses. Um, that changes the value. So if you increase your net operating income, you increase the value of the property. So um, I don't necessarily calculate the value of my portfolio based on 
what it could potentially be worth, you know, I really focus on, Hey, you know, what did I run out and go buy all this stuff for? So, so anyways, it could, it could, could be worth more. Um, well, that's the, that's the goal uh, of the future, right? (laughs) You know, there's going back to, uh, you know, strategies that some people follow, they really focus on, uh, you know, appreciation plays and, and, you know, trying to buy in a hot market that's, you know, going to grow. Um, that would be nice. And, and maybe someday I'll get to that point where I don't need to worry about cash flow as much, uh, because I have, you know, other streams of income. Um, but for now I care about cash flow, and, 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 you know, that's, the, that's the really important metric for me. So, um, you know, I, I, I appreciation is a bonus. Yeah. So that's why I, I don't calculate, you know, that piece of, of my portfolio. Well, that's cool. Well, you're, you're 25 years old and, um, you know, having a portfolio the size of that, as well as the the plans to, you know, eliminate the debt that you have and then create a, a six figure recurring income that you don't really have to do a lot to, to maintain is very impressive to me. Thank you very much for for being on the show today, uh, Joel. Where can people follow you and connect with you more? Yeah, uh, bigger pockets, uh, active in that community, social media. My email address, my name, Joel Flark at gmail dot com. Uh, reach out to me. Uh, you know, love connecting uh, with people who are interested in learning, uh, hopping on a phone call, um, you, you know, connecting periodically. If you have a deal and you're just not sure whether it's something that, you know, is a good deal, um, I'm happy to look at the numbers and give my advice. It's, it's just my advice. I'm not the expert. Uh, I don't know your market, you know, in particular. Uh, but happy to help people however I can. Yeah, very cool. Well, thank you so much for being here today, today, Joel. I really appreciate it. Hey, thank you. Take care. Wow. At 25 years old, Joel has a life plan focused around activities that he loves, family, sailing, and real estate. Kudos to Joel for pursuing his passion so early in his life. And I'm so glad to see that he's from the uh, great state of Michigan, and it just uh, continues to churn out winners like Joel. (laughs) I'm a little biased being from the mitten myself, but, uh, you know, anyway, here are my top three takeaways from my conversation with Joel Florek. Number one, get connected in the community. If you're going to pursue real estate as an investment option, start making connections in the area that you want to invest in. Join real estate investment associations, take another investor out for coffee and pick their brain or interview real estate agents that you might want to use to find your first property. It pays to be connected in the community that you want to invest in. Joel got his tip for the 16 unit that we talked about from his uh, carpet installer. So (laughs) get in the game and learn what's out there. Number two, debt is only a tool. As you heard during our interview, I shared my aversion to debt with Joel, but he had a great response. Debt is only a tool, he said, and if the tool is used improperly, it can become a weapon. Smart words. Be sure to know what you're getting into with these large loans and make sure you have a game plan to pay them back over time. Joel has a plan and he's working through it right now and he's making good money while he's doing it. So if you work the numbers like Joel has, you can do really well with leveraging real estate. It's just not for me and Nicole, and that's okay. You got to do it. uh, You got to do what's right for you, right? (laughs) Number three, take pride in the places you own. I loved Joel's point about making sure your rental properties are great places to live. The compliment that he received from his tenant that told him he was raising the quality of life in his unit That's just awesome to get that type of feedback. Even though this is a business, we can't forget at the end of the day, you're creating a home for someone to live in, someone who has a job, someone who has a family, kids, responsibilities. You got to take pride in it and make it a place you'd be proud to own. Nicole and I have been uh, talking about this point a lot lately. She said to me the other day when we were looking at some houses that... um, we weren't going to go for, but she responded and said, I want to own a rental property that I'd live in if need be. And I, I like those standards. I like that standard that, uh, that she's setting. I like that standard that's been echoed by 
Joel Florick today, and then again by Joel Larsgaard in session 101, marriagekidsandmoney.com slash session 101, if you guys want to check that one out. Another great real estate interview. But uh, overall, I think that's just a, some that's some great advice for new real estate investors like me. And if you are considering it, advice for you. So those are my top three takeaways. Number one, get connected in the community. Number two, debt is only a tool. And number three, take pride in the places you own. By building up our passive income through real estate, my friends, we'll all realize more time freedom and income diversity. That is a recipe for stress reduction and wealth building that I'm super pumped for. Now it's time to announce the Money Master of the Week. Aditya from North Carolina shared some incredible news with me last month. He recently paid off $35,000 of student loans and he saved $100,000 all in less than five years. That is determination and discipline. Nice work, Aditya. So how did he do it, right? According to his article that I will post in the show notes, Aditya did these three main things. Number one, he didn't give in to peer pressure and lifestyle inflation. When everyone else was spending their big old paychecks after college on new cars and homes, Aditya decided to maintain a comfortable lifestyle, not too lavish, but not too deprived. And that allowed him to pay off his debt and still enjoy life. And the second thing he did is he worked hard to get a raise. He went above and beyond at work to earn a full-time job and then really grow his income with that salary bump. And then number three, the last thing that he did that I found in the article was that he found people on the same path. Aditya, he surrounded himself with people and messages of positive reinforcement that his path was not only a a smart one, but the right one for him. He read blogs, he listened to podcasts, he spent time with friends that encouraged his frugal rock star life. (laughs) And now he's student debt free and has a nice chunk of change in the bank. Way to go, Aditya. That's awesome. If you want to read Aditya's detailed article on how he eliminated $35,000 of student loans and grew his savings by $100,000 in less than five years. I will have it in the show notes, everybody. But you can also check it out on his blog at seekingmyutopia.com. That's seekingmyutopia.com. Aditya, thank you so much for sharing this big win with us. And congratulations for being our Money Master of the Week. Do you have a recent financial victory that you want to share on the show? Send me a note at andy at marriagekidsandmoney.com or leave me a voicemail at marriagekidsandmoney.com slash voicemail. Those are always fun to hear because we love to hear other people's voices besides Andy's all the time. (laughs) So send it my way, email or voicemail, whatever you want to do. And you guys can go anonymous as well. You don't have to share your name. You can say, I'm Joe Blow from uh, whatever, North Carolina, from Michigan, whatever. Um, It's just fun to share these stories, the real stories, even if you want to go anonymous. All good. You'll find all the links and resources for today's show at marriagekidsandmoney.com slash session 113. That's session 113. My friends, I am doing a fun giveaway today. Yes, I'm giving something away. (laughs) A few months ago, we interviewed Chad Carson on the show, Coach Carson, and we talked about his new book, Retire Early with Real Estate. I had a chance to read it. This book is excellent. I want to give away a copy of it for you all being a listener of this show. And since we're talking about real estate today, I thought, what better book to do this giveaway with? So to be included in this giveaway, please leave me a review on Apple Podcasts or Stitcher and email me a screenshot of your review so I know that you did it to andy at marriagekidsandmoney.com. I will pick one random winner with the help of my Amazon Alexa. (laughs) 
She's good at picking random things. Um, and I'll do that from all the emails I receive between now and December 31st. And I'll send out that book in the first week of the new year. That way you can get started with retiring early with real estate via Coach Carson. This will also help me get exposure on the show, which I appreciate with those reviews, and it'll help you rock out the new year. So to leave an Apple Podcast review, go to marriagekidsandmoney.com slash Apple Podcast, and for a Stitcher review, go to marriagekidsandmoney.com slash Stitcher. I really appreciate you joining in the fun on this one, and I look forward to sending out this wealth-building book by Chad Carson. In the spirit of growth and inspiration, I'm going to end the show with a quote today from Will Rogers. Don't wait to buy real estate. Buy real estate and wait. Find that deal and build your future, everyone. Carpe diem. 